The rest of us grab our Bibles tonight. Turn with me if you would into 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to start with the ninth verse. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's start reading at the ninth verse. The Apostle Paul writes, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. For God hath revealed them unto us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God know no man but the spirit of God. But we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Mm. These things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they know foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he may uh, judges all things Yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of God. Yes. Heavenly Father, help us again tonight, dear Lord, as we minister your word. And I thank you again tonight, dear Lord, for who you are. Thank you again for what you're doing. I love you, honor you tonight, worship you, magnify you, give you praise tonight. And Lord, we need a deeper understanding of your word tonight. Help us. And we we'll give you praise and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. And amen. amen. We cannot, you and I cannot imagine, <coughs> all that God has in store for us in this life and for eternity. The Bible only gives us little bits and pieces. He will create a new heaven. And he's going to create a new earth. And we will live with Him, church, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. John said in Revelation 21 and 20, 21 and 1, this, the revelator John said, And I saw a new heaven yes. and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. Until then, until then, the Holy Spirit comforts and the Holy Spirit guides us, knowing the wonderful and eternal future that awaits us, gives us hope tonight, yes, amen. gives us courage tonight yes. to press in yes. and press on in this life, to endure hardship, yes. to avoid giving into temptation. This world is not all there is. Amen. The best is yet yes. to come. Yes. Amen. And I want to take my text tonight out of the Word of God. Having the mind of God. Paul says here, but it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that what? Love Him. <coughs> the statement basically employs three means of natural knowledge to us. One, to see, to hear, and to understand. Come on. We got to see, we got to hear it, and we got to understand it. The purpose is to show that we cannot come 
to knowledge of God through normal ways of learning. You cannot know God by normal ways of learning. We see Paul was talking about the Lord revealing these wonderful secrets to those who love Him. Yeah. God's not going to reveal it to everybody. Come on. Yeah. He's only going to reveal it to those yeah. who truly love Him. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about lip service. Yeah. I'm talking about heartfelt yeah. service yeah. that will worship Him and praise yeah. Him. Yeah. And He will not only rule, He loved to uh, uh, reveal His wonderful secrets but and hiding them from the curious and the skeptical, irrespective of their educational or intellectual abilities. In other words, church, they can have all the, the college degree if they want. Yeah. But if they're not, and I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but they, they, God will, will hide them from them. Mm -hmm. In other words, the key is love. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Love. <laughs> And more particularly, that of loving God, which refers to serving Him. And not only serving Him, but giving Him His rightful due regarding worship. Yeah. Amen? And service. Scientific quest or intellectual pursuit meets a closed door. God's creative abilities and his intellectual honesty is so far above the prodigal of even the brightest or educated of human beings as to have no comparison. In other words, even if one leaves out the spiritual completely, still there remains no common ground without respecting these other pursuits. Now, I'll explain that here a little bit more. He said in verse 19, he said, God had revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. When He said, reveal them unto us by His Spirit, plainly tells us the manner of impartation of spiritual knowledge, which is by revelation. As I said this morning, if we don't uh, go to the cross and believe in the cross and preach the cross, there is no revelation. Yes, amen. amen. You can't have revelation until you understand who He is yes. and what He's done yes. for you. Amen. So, in other words, here, the only what is undiscoverable by human reasoning, God makes known to us by and through the Holy Spirit. The only requirement on the part of the believer is some knowledge of the Word. Even as little as that may be, and faith in God. Come on. Yeah. When you got faith in God, church, amen, and you got a little bit of knowledge, the Lord will reveal things to us. Yeah. The Holy Spirit then begins His revelation, which actually never stops and will not stop until the resurrection. Amen. Come on. He said, For the Spirit, Searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Yes. Means that the Holy Spirit is the only one. The only one amply qualified to reveal God to us. Yes. Come on. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 25. This is what Jesus said. He said, but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you yeah. all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen? That's what we need today. Yeah. We need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost will bring back yeah. everything. The Holy Ghost will yeah. teach us the mind of Christ. You and I need that mind today. Yeah. We need to be like Jesus. We need to be like Jesus.
Jesus. Jesus, be Jesus in me. Amen? The Holy Spirit who searches the deep things of God uncovered this truth to the vision of these men who wrote the Old Testament and the New as well. They, come on church, I can't, that little portion we just sang through that resurrection power. Yes. Amen. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead yes. is that same power. Amen. Come on. <coughs> that lives inside of us. Yes. Come on. If He can raise the dead. Amen. Bro. If He can raise man or whoever from the dead. Guess what church? Yes. He can take care of a little sickness yes. if we'll just believe and trust yes. in Him and let the Holy Spirit be Jesus in us yes. and work in us. Yes. Yes. We, we, we should. Come on. We should not. It bothers me when we're sick. Come on. God, where is Sister Angela and I have been talking about that? Where's that power at? Come on. Where's that? We can lay hands upon the sick. Yeah. And they shall recover. Come on, church. Yeah. Amen. If it, if it was good then, it's good today. Yeah. I'm believing I'm serving yeah. in the same God yeah. who has the same power yeah. that they had back then. Amen. Why are we? He said these signs shall follow them. I'm asking God, you know my wife is too, we're asking God, Lord, give us that power, yes. give us that anointing, give us that, amen, that we can lay hands upon the sick and they yes. shall, that's not looking for me, I, I don't want to be up a pe pe on the pedestal, I just want to be a vessel yes. used by God and know that God is still on the throne yes. today. He said, for what man knoweth the things of a man, Save the spirit of man which is in him. Now, what does this mean here? It means that a man does not know what is in the heart of another man, much less what is in the heart of God. Unless, come on, unless the Lord reveals such to man. Come on. I don't know what's in your heart. Come on. That, and we don't know what's in God's heart unless God reveals it to us. Yeah. Come on. A lot of people will. A lot of Christians are nosy Christians. Yes. True. They like to get into people's conversations. Uh -huh. Huh? Then they give you a little bit. I've said this before. They'll grab a little bit of information then they'll try to prophesy over somebody. Yeah. Well, that's nothing but not of God at all, church. Yeah. Amen. If I want to know something about you, I'm going to ask God to reveal it to me. Yeah. Amen. That I can help you out. I don't want you to come up and tell me. Yeah. Come on. Amen. So many people today are that way. Amen. That's why there's so many false prophets yeah. in the land today. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Man can only know what is in his own mind. Man can only know what is in his own heart, which speaks of his spirit, which is the part of man that knows the will, the ability, come on, to reason, the intellect. Men may be able to discern some things about another man by testing the spirit of that particular individual. However, even then it is more guesswork than anything else. Come on. Even, the Bible says, he said, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Means that men cannot learn about God through scientific investigation or human reasoning, but only as the Spirit of God reveals such to the believer. Amen? Amen? Without spirit-directed revelation, which is always based on what? The Word of God. It is impossible for man to know anything about God. If one is to 
notice, at times, psychics, fortune tellers, claim that their revelations are from the Lord. They think such claims will make their services more desirable. Or it may be that some of them are deceived by Satan. Come on. They are deceived by Satan and they are no doubt are. And as much as their manner of operation is unscriptural, and that God does not appear to people through crystal balls or through the voices of dead people. We know that what they are receiving is not from God, but rather from Satan. The word of spiritual darkness. In other words, they are trafficking with demon spirits. I have yet to read in here where God tells me to go get a fortune teller and a crystal ball and stand at a table and have them to tell me what thus saith the Lord says. Amen. I need to get on my face yeah. before God yeah. and say, God, I need a revelation yeah. of your word today. Yeah. I need you to direct me. Yeah. I need you to give me wisdom. Yeah. I need you yeah. to give me knowledge. Yeah. I don't need no fortune teller to tell me anything. Amen. I need to open right. this yeah. up and yeah. start reading yeah. it and let the word come alive yeah. to me. Yeah. Put your money in the offering plate. Amen. <laughs> Instead of giving it to a fortune teller. Oh, boy, if I ever catch anybody doing that, I'll go come unglued. <laughs> so if you're going to hide it, you better do a good job. But I'm going to be praying God will reveal it to you. Yes, <laughs> also, we should be aware that Satan also traffics often in the realm of familiar spirits. These spirits imitate dead people. In many cases, the Virgin Mary. Pope John Paul II claims to have been visited, claims to have been visited by the Virgin Mary many years ago, telling him that he would be Pope. To be sure, it was not the Virgin Mary because such is unscriptural. Yes. Amen? Amen? Without doubt, it was a familiar spirit. Which means the man was and is guided by Satan. Millions are exactly as the woman at Jacob's well. When Jesus said unto her concerning worship, you worship ye not what? No, you worship, you know not what. In other words, your worship is not of the Spirit, is not of the Spirit of God, but rather of self or either from the powers of darkness. So we have two situations respecting revelation given by the Spirit of God. Number one, first of all, and all, Revelation from God will always come through the person and the office and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Number two, the individual must really know the Word of God in order to know what is being revealed, received, is actually from the Spirit of God or spirits of darkness. This is why John the Beloved said this, in 1 John 4 and 1. He said, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Church, come on, let me help you tonight. There's a lot of people in the church world today that they see something that has Jesus on it. Now, don't raise your hands. There's, there's, there's shows on television right now about Jesus. 
I don't watch it. Anything that comes out of Hollywood is nothing but a devil. That's right. But we'll pay. We see Jesus rode up on a on a billboard, or we'll see Jesus on some. Oh, we'll just flock to it. No. Come on. You better try the Spirit. Make sure it is of God. Huh? Come on. Try the Spirit. He said. Try it. See if it is of God. Yes. Amen. Just because it says Jesus. Amen. We'll flock. We'll pay hundreds of dollars. Come on. Church, you better watch what you're doing. You better know it's God. Amen. Amen. We are living in the last days. Yes, he said in verse 12, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Refers to the powers of Satan. Who is the God of this present world. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons that intellectual man cannot understand God is because he has the Spirit of God, not, or has the Spirit of the world, and not the Spirit of God. It is literally impossible for anyone with the Spirit to know anything about God or to come any, to any correct conclusions about God. In fact, Go back to what I've said here in verse 1. But God has prepared it for them that love Him. A little six-year-old girl who truly knows Jesus as her Savior knows more about God than the most educated professor in the most protested school of the world who is not born again. Amen! Amen. Come on, you can believe that if you want to or not. But I believe, I don't care if it says professor above his head. Amen. That little girl who just gave her life to Jesus Christ, who is born again, knows more about God than that professor who is not yes. saved. Yes, amen. That's what God said here. Come on, let me help you. He said, we have not received, we have received not the Spirit of the world. He said, but the Spirit which is of God. Come on, amen. amen. Simply means that when the believing sinner came to Christ, he did not receive more of the Spirit of the world which he already had, but rather he got the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Which now makes it possible for him to understand the things of God. Hallelujah. When you got the spirit of the world inside you, you're not going to know the things of God. Right. Amen. But when you get saved, you got saved, and that spirit of the God came in you, amen. That you are a candidate now to receive the revelation of the word of God. Because now you have the spirit. God in you. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to, you don't get more of the spirit of the world. Amen. That spirit of the world got to go. Darkness has got to flee. Yes, yes. Huh? Amen. You walk in this building when it's late tonight, what's going to be in here? Darkness. Until we flip on the light switch. And when we flip the light switch on, darkness flees. When you got saved, darkness was inside you. But when you got saved, darkness had to go. And the Spirit of God entered into that body and soul. Come on. And now, amen, you, can have, you are a candidate to receive the revelation and the knowledge of God Himself. Amen. He said, But the Spirit of which is of God, Amen. The divine nature is imparted to the believer which changes him completely and it's all done by the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's all done by that same resurrection power yes. that raised Jesus from the dead. Come on, church. He said that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
means that this is the only way one can truly know. All of God's gifts are without money and without price and not to be bought with money. The only thing that is required is consecration to the, to the Lord and faith in His promises. Come on. When you got saved, it didn't cost you a dime. Huh? Come on, you didn't have to pay a $1,000 to get saved. Amen. Everything that God has for you and I is free. Free, that commercial. Free, free, free. Free, free, free. Free, free, free. I love free things. Huh? I don't know about you, but I love free things. Huh? Amen. He said in verse 13, which things also we speak. Means that Paul was seeking not only that which God had given him to speak, he is in effect saying that what he is writing is from the Lord, therefore inspired by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, not only revealed, but illuminated as well, which means that it can be understood by all believers. Come on. Amen. He said, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, refers to corrupted wisdom, which is of the spirit of the world, come on, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Amen. Which pertains to the Word of God and means that the Bible is not the words of men, even though written by men, come on, but rather of God, therefore, air free. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Again, it means that the Bible writers were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write what they did, even with the Holy Spirit helping them to find exactly the right words to express what He, the Spirit of God, wanted said. Yes. Amen? Feel 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's why we can't do anything without the leading and the guiding of the Holy Ghost. Amen? We can't operate and do under the anointing without the Holy Ghost. He said in verse 14, But the nature, natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now this passage presents man living under the control of fleshly passion governed by the sin nature. Regrettably, this is not only the case with those who do not know Christ, but also with many Christians who although are saved, come on, still are being controlled by the sin nature. One can only be controlled by the divine nature, which every true believer has as such a believer places his faith entirely in Christ and the cross, which then gives the Holy Spirit latitude to work in his heart and life, bringing about the desired results. Yes. I don't know about hate, Look up here. You ever seen a work in progress? <coughs> Look up here. I'm a work in progress. The Holy Ghost is still working on me. Huh? He's still working on me. Thank God. Amen. I'm glad He's working on me, not you. Huh? I'd rather have Him, amen, as my teacher. Come on, church. Hallelujah. That's the reason that it is impossible for man within his own capabilities to solve the crime problem, the drug problem, the sin problem, or man's apparitions in any capacity outside of God. And irrespective of the education, environment, money, law, man is helpless. Yeah, man is. Amen? To be frank. Got any franks in here? No. 
To be frank, it would be easier to get a saber-toothed tiger to act like a poodle dog than to get man to conduct himself right outside of God. Huh? Come on, did you hear me? It would, uh, it would be easier to get a saber-toothed tiger to act like a poodle dog than to get man to conduct himself right outside of God. Yeah. He can't, he won't do it. So it's easier for us to get a saber-toothed tiger than teach it to bark like a poodle. Because <laughs> man, you can't change man. Yeah. You can't change stupid. Yeah. Oh, you can't fix it either. The Spirit of God has nothing but good things for man. Yes. But which the uh, unregenerated man cannot perceive or receive. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Yes. Refers to a lack of understanding. It is this way because the spiritual capacity of unregenerated man is dead. And, excuse me, and therefore the things of the Lord are shut up in him. Come on. He said, neither can he know them. Well, come on, in verse 14. Neither can he know them. It's like a painting to a blind man or music to a deaf person. Huh? A deaf person cannot hear the music. A blind person cannot see the picture, the painting. So, it is also, amen, to them neither can he know them. The, unre the unregenerated man. Because they are spiritually discerned, as Paul said. Gives us the key to the things of God. This means they are not discerned by scientifically or psychologically or intellectually or religiously. Religion being the effort of man and not God. Spiritually means that which is not physically physical, but rather divine. When the believing sinner, you and I, comes to God, he is transformed by the power of God. The divine nature of God is implanted within his heart and life. Now he can understand the things of God which means he can discern and understand spiritual things. Hmm. Amen. When I was lost, I couldn't do that. But now, I can. Come on. He said in verse 15, But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. If one is to notice, the Scripture says all things. All things. Okay? And not all people. Yeah. He's not judging people. He's judging all things. In fact, we are forbidden to judge the hearts or motives of other people which only God is qualified to do. Because the Holy Spirit rules within the truly spiritual person. This individual is able to judge or uh, 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 criticize, scrutinize as God Himself who would judge, amen, it. In other words, this person sees things as God sees them. Huh? That is the ideal as the Holy Spirit through Paul presents this truth. Actually, the equipment of the spiritual person to investigate all things rest in the fact that he has the mind of Christ. Come on. And that's where we got to get to. We got to get to that point where we have the mind. Quit trying to guesswork God. To quit trying to guesswork what people are going through. Come on. When we get the mind of God, church, amen. He said, yet he himself is judged of no man refers at least to judgment which God will accept. In fact, 
he may be judged, condemned, uh, depreciated, or slandered every day of his life, and most probably is. But the arrow flights, the flights of human judgment fall short of him. Come on. In other words, when they shoot those arrows at us, they won't hit us. They'll land right in front of us. Come on. One who criticizes a spiritual person who's doing all within his power to bring about God's will is in danger of criticizing God himself. In fact, it can be said that to oppose that which belongs to God is to oppose God. In verse 16, as I close, for who have known the mind of God that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of God. Amen? The ideal is that the mind of God as should be obvious is the highest authority. God knows all, church, and that means all in every sense. Come on. So, anyone who would question God is foolish to say the least. Having the mind of God, as Paul uses the phrase here, means to think like Christ rather than the way it is used in Philippians 2 and 5, which says, Let's, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, which has to do with attitude. People who opposes the mind of Christ judge every situation as God would judge it, and they see things as God sees them, which is the intention of the Holy Spirit in the heart and the life of the believer. And yet, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in verse 37, which says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Speaks of spiritual, uh, the, the spiritual person as one who is able to receive acquisition. One of the marks of the true spirituality is the recognition that one does not know it all. We got a, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of know-it-alls out there. Yes. Come on, in his writing, Paul makes it clear. That spiritual people still can grow spiritually and still need acquisition and still need to be careful to avoid falling into sin. Huh? God wants you and I, church, to have the mind of Christ. And the only way we can do it is that the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, and He reveals them to us. Amen. God wants you to think like Him. We, we'd be in less trouble. We thought like God, spoke like God, acted like God. Huh? Instead of acting like children. Come on. Too many Christians today are acting like children instead of acting like God. And God wants us to have His mind. He wants us to act like Him. That's why I felt led there to sing that song, Jesus. Be Jesus in me. I can't do this, church. You can't do this. Amen? But God can. Yeah. God can help you and I if we'll ask Him. Come on, come on. Yes. You have not because you ask not. Yeah. Amen? And you ask, you will receive this. You will receive. Those who ask shall receive. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I want those things of God. I want to know what God is saying. Yes. Amen? God wants to wants you to be like Him, Amen. Not not that we're little gods, no. But we have the the mind of Christ that we know by revelation. God is teaching us, showing us, Amen. What we are to do, Amen. So having the mind of Christ, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something out of this. What Paul was trying to bring. Amen. Because it is written, I have not seen nor have ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Yeah. But thank God. Amen. God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit 
for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, having the mind of Christ. I pray that you truly enjoyed that message. And I would like to give you an opportunity, if you're strayed away from the Lord or feel that you would like to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask that you would repeat this simple little prayer with me today. And all you got to do is believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. And you can be born again today. So if you would, just repeat this little prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today as a lost sinner. You, dear God, said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. I am asking you, dear God, to save my soul and to cleanse me from all sin. I am accepting Jesus Christ into my heart and what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary in order to purchase my redemption. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that you, God, Raise Jesus from the dead. I have called upon your name as you have said, and I believe that right now I am saved. If you repeated that with me and believe in your heart, you are saved today. 